What I might do is create a copy just for baking. If I need to keep it low poly like this, I can take these and create a duplicate. Let's do that. I'll just hit apply. I'm not going to snap it to anything. And I'll do the same thing for each of these. I'll just create a duplicate. Hit apply or the enter key. No. So with that, I'm going to drag each one just beneath its original. Let's go ahead and hide all these. We will duplicate. Enter. No. Drag that above. I'm just doing this in order to keep things nice and orderly. Duplicate. Enter. No. Again, same thing here. Enter. No. And now what I'm going to do is with each of these copies, I'm going to apply Catmull Clock Subdivision to them. So with this first one, I can go back to the Select tool, then smooth it with a Catmull Clock Subdivision. I may do it one more time. I'll hide that. Do the same thing here. Right mouse click and choose Smooth Catmull Clark. I'll repeat that one more time. For the remainder of these items, I'm just repeating the same process, so I'll speed up the playback for a bit. So now I can unhide each of these copies. And if I go to the Scope workspace, I have this original, but I'm going to create a new layer, a separate layer, and I'm going to go to the geometry section and I can choose retopo mesh to sculpt mesh. Whatever is visible in the retopo workspace will get brought into the sculpt workspace as a copy. And you'll notice how it uses a hierarchy here. And it also adopts the names of the layers. Now, let's go with this base, and I'm going to switch to voxel mode just for the moment. And let's make that one and a half million. So we can see, because we were able to apply that Catmull Clark subdivision, that it's much smoother. Now if we want, we can extrude that a bit. And then we can smooth all a few times. And that will help smooth the surface a bit. What I'm going to do is hit Control Z a few times to go back to surface mode. Okay, so we're back, and you'll notice when you're in surface mode, it applies the viewport smoothing that you typically see in any 3D application. But what we can do, if we did want to switch to voxel mode without seeing that fastening, we can click the S, and again, we can choose the value that we want. Let's this time go with 1 million instead of one and a half. But this time, what we want to do is subdivide before we voxelize. So this will allow us to subdivide again. So let's try two levels of subdivision. And because we applied those edge loops around the hard edges, we can do this without degrading our model. Now we are in voxel mode at about a million without any faceting. We could also do the same thing if we wanted to stay in surface mode. You can also look at your wireframe to help determine just how dense your model is. So at this point, what I'm going to do is we're going to stop the video here and we're going to pick up in the next one where we're going to apply some flourishes to our model and also extrude these edges as well. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.